your Bibles today, you'd be kind enough to join me in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 18. 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. We're going to begin at verse 18. It is, I will warn you now, it is a little bit lengthier a passage than we often use. I tried to look and see if I couldn't cut it back a little bit, but uh, I felt like we really kind of needed to read the entire story so we could start off on the right foot. 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse number 14, excuse me, 18, reading through verse 37, we stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. Now, Lisa, you don't have to stand, honey. You stay seated. We don't That's need to. That's I got this with you. Okay. We I read think. from the... Okay. <laughs> we read from the King James text. And when the child was grown, it, it fell on a day that he went out to his father and to the reapers, and he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to the lad... Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins and take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not, and if any salute thee, answer him not again, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awakened. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain, and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up, and lay upon the child, and put his mouth upon his mouth, and his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands, and stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him 
And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her. And when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. Amen. I want to talk to us today for a little while on the topic, You believe what you hear, so watch what you say. You believe what you hear, so watch what you say. Will you bow your heads with me one more moment? Father, we love you. And we thank you, Lord, for the wonderful presence of the Lord that we feel in the house of God today. There is no greater joy than walking into the house of God and singing the songs of Zion, which encourage our faith and inspire us and uplift us, even in the darkest of hours. Our hearts are made glad by your presence and by your power. Master, in the name of Jesus, we need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Ever since I was a child in the pew of the Pentecostal church, I've known, God, that the anointing makes the difference. Without the anointing, we're just a voice in a barrel. But, Master, today, if you'll touch me, if you'll touch your messenger, if you'll touch the hearing of every individual in this room, those who are watching live by reason of the Internet, those who will later watch by reason of recording, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost confirm to our hearts today, Lord, that it is you who speak to us by reason of the prophetic. We're not merely hearing the thoughts and ideas and panderings of men, but we hear a word from the Lord. For the word of God today is quick and powerful and sharp. It's able to do great things, but above all else it is able to bring faith and hope to our lives. Grant it this hour, Master, for we ask it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated, every one of you. Thank you, Lisa, for honoring the Lord and even making the effort to stand today. I know we're having a little trouble, and God certainly <laughs> understands that. Amen. You believe what you hear, so watch what you say. Human beings have the unique ability to communicate through a very complex means of language. The vocabulary of various languages can be very, very complex. But what we often fail to recognize is that there is a principle that stands true, and that principle is this. We believe what we hear. Say, Pastor, I don't believe everything I hear. No, as you get older, you, you should at least. Unless, of course, you're an extreme right-wing <laughs> lunatic. You should at least be able to kind of weed through stuff, you know, uh, and determine what's right and what isn't. But look at children. Let a father call a child stupid long enough, and after a while that child becomes convinced they're stupid. They may have an IQ of 150. It doesn't matter, Lisa, because they've been told over and over again they're stupid. And they will believe that throughout the remainder of their lives. Speak to a young person and tell them they're ugly. When they grow up and all of a sudden that ugly duckling becomes a beautiful swan, they will still believe they're ugly because they have heard it so often. It's been said to them so often. I know some people, I won't say any names, when they were young, everybody would say, you're so skinny, you're so skinny, you're as skinny as a rail, you're just this little tiny petite thing. And as they get older, Martin, and put on a few pounds, and they're not quite as skinny as they used to be, they still run around talking about how skinny they are. Hello now. 
I'm not going to say any names. So I'll just look his way and whistle. <laughs> we believe what we hear. This is why it is important for us as human beings and as children of God to be careful and to be mindful of what we allow in our hearing. Now, unfortunately, oftentimes we cannot control, Lisa, what is said to us nor can we control what we hear. A few moments ago during our worship service, somebody decided to drive by in the park a lot with their music just blasting and blaring in their car, and we could not control the fact that that beat was coming into our church house, could we? No, had no control over it. So it's impossible for us today to control everything that comes into our hearing. It's impossible. Now, there are certain characters, when they come on television, boop, I hit the mute button. <laughs> I will not submit myself to one second of that lying, deceptive voice. I don't want to hear one word that character's got to say. Boop, mute it. I have a certain amount of control, Bill. I don't have total control over everything I hear, but I've got enough control when I see who's about to talk, I just go boop and silence. But there's an important principle that a lot of believers don't seem to understand. A lot of Christians don't seem to get. We believe what we hear. So be careful what you say. The mouth today that is closest to my ear is located right here. The voice that I hear more than any voice I will ever hear in my entire lifetime is my own voice. See, long before I met Tommy, I was talking. I was talking to everybody from my mother when I was a kid all the way up to pastoring churches and preaching to hundreds of people and on some occasions thousands of people. And I've been talking and Tommy will tell you I haven't stopped and I seldom stop for very long. Drive him nuts. But he's learned to ignore me and watch his shows anyway. He thinks I don't know, but I know. But I hear my voice more than I'll hear any other voice. Therefore, does it not stand to reason, if we believe what we hear, then we better be careful what we say. Amen? Do you understand what I'm talking about now? We better be careful what we say, because our voice will be the one voice that we hear the most often. Unfortunately, if you grow up around abuse, if you grow up around name-calling, if you grow up around accusations, and criticism and condemnation, oftentimes you'll grow up and you will repeat those behaviors. You'll find yourself name calling. I've got to admit, folks, I that's a bad, terrible habit I have. It's a terrible habit I have, and I hate it. I really do. The Bible said, confess your faults one unto another, pray for one another that you may be healed. I'm not confessing this to you so you can judge me or criticize me. I'm confessing it to you so you can help me pray through it, okay? When I get frustrated and aggravated, my father was a classic name caller. You know, you're an idiot, you're a moron, you're stupid, you're this, you're that, blah, blah, blah. And, and my father, you know, had more names than Carter had liver pills. Well, kids learn what they hear. Well, a lot of times I'll do something, Martin, and I'll make a mistake, and I'll say, oh, you idiot. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. oh, you fool, you stupid clown, why did you, you know? And we find ourselves speaking for an individual who is no longer in our presence. We'll find ourselves speaking for dad. We'll find ourselves speaking for mom, or we'll find ourselves speaking for grandma. She's not there anymore, but no, but her influence is because we'll turn around and we'll vocalize what we're accustomed to hearing when we do these sorts of things, when we make a mistake, when we, you know, flub up a little. Well, I'm so used to hearing criticism. I'm so used to hearing name calling that vote. Here it comes. And I'm literally feeding myself on the same old vomit. 
that grandma or dad or mom or whoever, or Aunt Sue, used to pass out when I was young. Why do we do that? You believe what you hear. So watch what you say. Yeah. You don't yeah. need to repeat the garbage that you were fed when you were young. We're reading a story today about a woman, a Sunamite woman, who had desired to have a child. She had approached old age and had never had a child, never had a boy to carry on her husband's name. And she and her husband became hosts to the prophet of God, uh, Elisha. When Elisha would come into their community, they offered him a place to stay. They went so far with their hospitality as to actually build a room onto their house that was dedicated exclusively to Elisha. I mean, these were some, they must have had a little bit of money, and these were folks who really believed in blessing the man of God. Now I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of churches that will take this and run with it. And there are certain communities in particular where they've taken this principle and they've really just emaciated it. I'm going to tell you a little secret. When God calls a man or a woman to ministry, and they honor that calling. And, they, and I'm going to tell you, it takes a lot more courage than you realize for a human being to answer the call of God in their life. This is not, ministry is not an easy task by any stretch of the imagination. Don't ever kid yourself. Don't ever think, oh, the preacher, all he does is get up in the pulpit and yell at me. What difference does it be? Oh, his life is easy. Oh, bless the Lord. No, it's not. Not if you're doing this thing right. If you're trying to serve the Lord and you're trying to serve His people and you're trying to tell the truth and you're trying to obey the voice of the Holy Ghost and when God says say something, you say it, whether you want to say it or not. And believe me, like some of the things I was saying earlier in this service, I don't really want to say those things because I know there's people out there going to label me a nut. I know there's people out there going to think I'm crazy. I've been down this road a long time, honey. I've been traveling this a long while. I know how people respond to these things. I don't care. God called me to be his mouthpiece, not yours. God called me to speak what he laid on my heart, not what you laid on my heart. I've got to say, because there may be somebody out there listening who has enough fear of God in their life to actually hear what I'm saying and act upon it. And it may wind up saving somebody's life. God help us, it might wind up bringing somebody healing. It might wind up bringing somebody deliverance. It might actually help somebody make heaven. So I've got to obey the voice of the Lord regardless of whether what I have to say is popular, regardless of whether what I have to say makes me look crazy or sane or otherwise. I've got to. That's the nature of the call in my life. It is not easy, especially prophetic ministry. Because people, Tommy will tell you, I get so frustrated. You have no idea how frustrated I get. I, I drive him crazy sometimes. I'll say, I've been saying for years and years and years that this was coming. I kept warning people. I kept warning people. I kept warning people. Didn't I keep warning people? And he says, yes, honey, you did. Yes, you did. And I say, then why in the world did they do what they did? Why in the world did they approach things the way they approached them? Why in the world did they not listen to me? And he says, well, you can only control what you say. You can't control how they respond. Amen. I had a former member of... One of my affirming churches came down to Texas and visited our little church here when we weren't even, I don't think, Tommy, I don't think we were a year old probably at that point. And I love this gentleman. He's a terrific fellow. He's a sincere Christian LGBT man. And he was a great blessing to me in our work uh, in another city. He was faithful. He tithed. I mean, you know, this is the kind of member every church benefits from. And I really enjoy this person. Well, this person came to me and said, The Lord spoke to me and told me to come to Dallas and be part of this church. I said, Well, praise the Lord. I already know this guy, uh, uh, Martin. You know, I already know this fellow. I've already got a relation. I was his pastor elsewhere. So, I mean, you know, wonderful. I Praise God. I was excited. 
said, come on. Come on down. Well, I don't have the money, though. I'm praying for a way. And the Lord spoke to me and said, tell him, I'm going to cause the company you work for to offer you a buyout. They're going to offer you a separation and give you money, you know, and all that. So I told him that. He looked at me and said, well, the company I've been working for the last couple of years, they've been laying people off left and right, and they haven't offered anybody a severance package. They have not given anybody any kind of money when they released them. I said, well, I'm just telling you what God told me. About six months later, I got a call. You won't believe this. <laughs> Try me. <laughs> company I'm working for is offering me a severance. They need to lay people off. And they've offered me so many thousands of dollars, and I'll be able to keep my insurance for so many months, and blah, 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 if, if I'll accept this voluntary package. I said, hallelujah. There you go. I guess God knew what he was talking about when he told me what he told me, right? Well, a couple months after that, I get a call. I've moved to this city over here in the Midwest. You did what? Oh, I found a relationship online. I found somebody online. Yes, and guess where they live? They live in that financial metropolis that is secure in every situation, Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me tell you something. If God speaks to you to do something, he's got some good things in store for you. If you're fool enough to question the will of God and the mind of God to follow after your own idea of what you think is right for you, then I'm, going to, I'm just going to say it. You deserve what you got coming to you, as far as I'm concerned. When I was 16 and God told me to go to Texas, I was 16. I never lived away from home in my life. I never even had visited Texas. I never even visited. Had no idea about nothing. I didn't know the first thing in the world about Texas. But I got on the phone, called my great aunt, said, can I come down and stay with you for a while till I can get myself situated? The Lord has spoken to me to come to Texas. And I went. I'm 52. I'll be 53 in September. There isn't a day of my life I don't thank God. I don't thank God. I don't thank God. I don't thank God that he brought me to Texas when I was 16. I don't thank God that I experienced some of the faith building experiences that I had when I was 16. That I don't thank God that he brought me to a great church and a great man of God like J.T. Gillum so I could get plugged into that old time Pentecostal Holy Ghost church move of God and believe in God for miracles like we used to have when I was a kid but the church I grew up in had long since died. I don't I thank God every day. I still thank God every day. You think I'm joking? Ask Tommy if I don't talk about Brother Gillum even when we're at home. Probably drive him nuts with it. Don't say nothing. You don't want to have a fight when we get back to the house. You know Brother Gillum? He, he's my boy. Now. Martin, I could never... Uh, what I got in coming to Texas at 16 was so valuable to me, I can't even tell you. Did I go through some hard times? Oh, did I experience some rough things? Oh, yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. All things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. Even the bad things that I experienced, Lisa, taught me lessons that I'm still living with today. They taught me principles and truths that helped me even today. So I thank God for every bit of the experience, the hard parts and the easy parts, the good parts and the bad parts, the happy parts and the sad parts. They all have served for the best good in my life and in my walk with God got people today, God is trying to talk to them and trying to direct them to a place. They don't know where their walk with God could be, Martin. 
They don't know what God's trying to do for them in terms of their walk with God. They don't know what He's trying to do for them in terms of their relationship with Him. They don't know what He's trying to do with them in terms of building their faith and establishing their security. No, but they'll second guess Him on a, on a dime. They'll second guess the Lord. Johnny, every minute of every day, oh, the Lord said do thus and so, but I found me a cutie over here. I think I think I should go this way. Um, I got news for you, honey. Every time God tells you to do something, you can bet the devil is going to tempt you and try to get you off on another track. You can bet on it as sure as I'm alive. I could tell you what happened to me when I was 16 and God told me to come to Texas. I found somebody I thought was going to be the love of my life. Found somebody. But I prayed. I said, Lord, if this isn't what you want, then find a way to bring it to an end. She did. <laughs> now we're friends on Facebook. We've been, we, we've been wonderful friends for many, many decades. But do you follow what I'm saying? I wanted the will of God more than I wanted anything. And I said, Lord, if it's hard for me to do it, then you find a way to get it done. And I'll accept it. I'll accept it as you will. You know what I'm talking about, Johnny? Yes, Lord, if you don't want this relationship to work, then you, then it's, it's too hard for me to end it. So find a way for it to end. Mm -hmm. I will warn you, it's going to hurt. It's not going to be easy just because you told the Lord to go ahead and do it. No, it might not be easy. But you'll at least be in a position to walk in the will of God. Do you follow what I'm saying? Amen. Lord, if you want me to move, then try up the brook Kidron. You remember when the prophet was held up by the brook Kidron and the Lord fed him with ravens? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the brook dried up. All of a sudden he had no water source. He had to move. <laughs> he had to find another spot. He had to go somewhere else. You know what? There have been times I've told the Lord, Lord... I feel like you're telling me to do something, but I'm having a devil of a time finding the nerve and the courage to do it. So dry up the brook. Because if you dry up the brook, I'll have no option. Do you follow what I'm telling you? See, I'll tell you, God will he'll use circumstances. If you think for a minute that God doesn't work in the lives of men, you just try. You just try putting a fleece out before the Lord and see. See, that's what we call it when you put a condition out there. And you say, Lord, if you want me to do this, then, then let this condition come about. That's called a fleece. And I'm going to tell you, you'll find out real quick, God can do things you never dreamed He could do. This lady had never had a baby. She wanted a baby. She wanted a son to carry her husband's name. They built a room under their house for... The prophet Elisha, and every time Elisha came into town, he would bless them with his presence. And they were blessed by his presence. When she mentioned to the man of God, I always wanted a son to carry my husband's name. The man of God said, listen, you have been a blessing to God's servant. You have been a, a blessing to the prophet of God. See, the Bible said if you give a child of God a cup of water in the name of a righteous man, you'll receive a righteous man's reward. said if you give a prophet a cup of water in the name of a prophet, you'll receive a prophet's reward. I'm going to tell you, when God calls somebody to ministry and they obey God and they do what they're supposed to do, if you'll support them, which is what all of you are doing today, God will bless you for it. So the fact that this lady built a house under a room under a house, you see, that house was under a constant state of blessing. Mm -hmm. Because they were a blessing to the man of God. Do you follow what I'm saying? All right. Now next thing you know, bless the Lord, she has a baby. She tells the man of God, whatever you do, don't mess with me now. Don't let me have this baby and then have something go wrong. Last thing in the world I want is to finally get what I've always wanted and have it torn out of my hands. One day the boy's out in the field and he goes to his father. He said, Daddy, my head's hurting. My head's hurting. Next thing you know, he falls out. One of his servants carries him to the house, lays him in his mother's arms, and the boy dies about noontime. Mom takes that child 
Oh, I tell you, I love people of God who know where to take their trouble. Oh, 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 oh. I love when people of faith know where to go when they have a heart ship come their way when a trial comes their way she said i'm gonna take him to that old prophet's room the prophet ain't here but we built that room for the man of god our home is blessed because of the man of god i have a son because of the man of god and bless god i'm gonna take this child and lay him on the man of god's bed she put the boy in on the man of god's bed Runs out into the field, says to her husband, give me a donkey and give me a man, a young man, so I can get out to the prophet of God. I need to go see the prophet of God. What's the trouble? Oh, everything's fine. <laughs> the young man brings, she gets the donkey all ready to go. The young servant comes to lead her. She said, go as fast as we can go. Don't you slow down for me. I may be an old lady, but don't you slow down. Say, the only time you slow down is if I tell you to slow down. Otherwise, you go full gallop. Is everything all right, miss? Oh, everything's fine. We believe what we say. So be careful. I mean, excuse me, we believe what we hear. So be careful what you say. Oh, I'm going to tell you, this lady, ha, <laughs> ha. She had it down. She had it down. Oh, she wasn't going to focus on her difficulty. She wasn't going to focus on her trial. She wasn't going to focus on the fact that her son was dead. Hallelujah. She was going to focus on the fact that when it's all over, everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. She was going to focus on her faith, not on her trouble. She was going to focus on what God could do. And not on what needed to be done. She gets out to the prophet. The prophet sends his servant running. Said, she's coming at a full gallop. Something must be wrong. Go ask her. How's your husband? Are you okay? Is your son okay? Quickly do this. The servant goes out there. How's your husband? How's your kid? Oh, everything's fine. <laughs> Lady, you're crazy. Some people in our world today would say, oh, she was living in denial. No, she wasn't. She believed what she was saying. <laughs> Denial is when you're saying something even you don't believe. Denial is when you're going against the truth that you know. No, she believed her truth. God is able. Hallelujah. God is able. God can do great things. God gave me my son. God can preserve my son. Hallelujah to God. She was focused on her truth. Oh, it's not about being in, uh, in a state of denial. No, it's about professing the right things. It's about speaking things that encouraged her faith and kept her faith focused. How many times... Do we say things that sabotage our own outcome? I'm building my shed. It's hot as hell's bells out there. I mean to tell you. Now, I've never been one for heat. I, I can't stand heat. Even when I was a kid growing up in Connecticut, uh, we don't have heat up there like you have in Texas, I'm going to tell you. But even in Connecticut, when it got to 93, I was about to pass smooth out. You know, I just, I'm just, oh, Lord have mercy. I used to play baseball and all that. And, I mean, I'd get so hot, my head would get so hot, I'd wind up with these terrible headaches, and I'd get sick to my stomach, and, oh, I had all kinds of trouble, all because of the heat. I never, never, never could stand the heat. But if you ask me how you doing with your shit, I could say, I could say, well, bless God with all this heat and the weather being what it is, I don't know if I'm ever going to get it done. How many people you know are like that? Hello now. I don't know if I'm ever going to get that thing done. Boy, I'll tell you what, I can't do but an hour and two a day. It's just taking me forever. Instead, I'm saying, I'll get there. I'll get it done. I'm going to get this thing done. Believe me, 
As I'm hoping, God willing, I'll have it done. Didn't I tell you earlier today? God willing, I'll have it done by next weekend. See, I'm professing a good profession. Hello now. I'm speaking positive things. I'm saying things I need to hear. Hello now. The only thing that's going to encourage me to keep going to get the thing done is if I encourage myself. So I'm not going to speak of the trouble. I'm going to speak of the cure. My Lord, have mercy. Got Christians today. Bless the Lord, how are you feeling? Well, you know, the chemotherapy is about killing me. And I mean to tell you, I just can't hardly eat anything. And blah, 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 blah. Now, I understand you're struggling. I understand you're having a hard time. Now, I'm not making light of that. But if you can just learn, you believe what you hear. So be careful what you say. God's going to see me through. The Lord's going to touch me. The Lord's going to help me. I believe in God. I know when this is all done that God is going to do a great thing in me. Hallelujah. When I lost my hearing a few years back, woke up one morning stone deaf, stone deaf in my, I think it was my left ear. Can't hardly remember. It's been a while now. I'm not going to go through the whole story again, but went to a church, got known it with all to pray for, and there was no immediate miraculous recovery. I finally went to an ear specialist. He said, you have permanent nerve damage inside your left ear. He said, you will likely be deaf in your left ear the rest of your life. Isn't that what he told me? I kept saying to Tommy, oh, I can't be deaf the rest of my life. I can't be deaf. No, I didn't. What did I tell you, Tommy? I said, I know. Woo, I know God's going to take care of this. Didn't I tell you that? How many times did I say to you, I know God's going to take care of this. In the meantime, it's a pain in the neck. But I know God's going to take care of this. I know the Lord's going to heal me, but I wish it was today rather than tomorrow. Hello now. Oh, I'm telling you, folks, you believe what you hear. So be careful what you say. Just put that profession of faith out there. If you just speak in terms of faith. Here this woman was with a dead son lying at home. And yet every time somebody inquired of her as to how things were going, she said, oh, everything's good. All is well. All is well. This is where we get that beautiful old hymn. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. The man who wrote that song wrote it on a ship as he was coming home from the mission field. He was a missionary. He had just buried his wife and daughter on a foreign mission field. And he's coming home on a steamer ship and he writes the song, It is well, it is well with my soul. Hallelujah. You believe what you hear. So watch what you say. Folks, everything comes out of your mouth feeds your spirit. Everything that you speak is immediately heard by your ear you know, Shakespeare in his play Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 2, it's a slightly changed version of the line that he wrote, but we know the old saying, Methinks thou dost protest too much. That's one way of saying, Who are you trying to convince, me or you? <laughs> Sometimes when people say, there was no collusion, there was no crime, nobody was interfering, nobody was trying to obstruct justice, no collusion, no crime, no interference, nobody was trying to obstruct justice, no collusion, no crime, nobody was trying to obstruct justice. When people say that over and over and over and over, methinks thou dost protest too much. You see, you believe what you hear, so watch what you say. We got somebody spending all this time trying to convince himself. Because, honey, he ain't convincing me. 
Sometimes people will say things they know aren't fact, that they know aren't true, because they're trying to convince themselves. Hello now. Sometimes you got an abusive husband, you got a spouse. I don't know why God gives me the things he gives me sometimes to use as an example. I really don't. I, I, it's like that come to me out of the boondocks. I said, Lord, somebody out there is listening, and they need what I'm about to say. Sometimes you're in an abusive relationship. You've got a spouse that treats you miserably, terribly, and that person will sit there and say, Oh, but I know that Joel loves me. I know that Joel cares about me. No, you don't. You don't know that at all, but you're saying it because you're trying to convince yourself. Am I telling the truth? Got parents that mistreat you, parents that abuse you, and children will say, well, but I, I, know, I know my mother loves me, I know my dad loves me. No, you don't. You don't know that at all, and you know you don't know that at all. That's the problem. You don't feel love, and when you don't feel the love, you're not convinced of the love. So you wind up saying it in hopes that you can convince yourself of that reality. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh my goodness, folks. If we approach our dilemmas, our situations today, whoops, with a positive, faith-filled profession, we will come to believe what we are saying. So we sow into our spirit lease of faith and hope. By speaking faith and hope, God will provide. There's a good phrase. There's a phrase for you to learn. Instead of griping and groaning, just say, God will provide. How about, I know the Lord will make a way. Hallelujah. How about, God is able. There's an old song, Vessel Goodman, and the Goodmans used to sing, Oh, the answer's on the way, this I know. Jesus said it, I believe it, and it's so. Our Heavenly Father knows our need before we pray. And you can rest assured, the answer's on the way. Yeah, how many times... I could verbalize something negative and something down-mouthed and sad. Instead, I'll say, oh, the answer's on the way. This I know. Hallelujah. You know why we come to church and we sing the songs of Zion? Do you know why we come to church and we sing the songs we sing? Because we are singing to ourselves. Hallelujah. We are sowing into our spirit. Faith and positivity. Somebody might look and say, Well, bless God, why do y'all sing songs like, I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible says. When you've got people there that don't necessarily have the Holy Ghost. They will. Especially as long as we keep professing it. Hallelujah. As long as we keep saying it because we'll believe what we hear. Glory to God. The more you remind yourself, the Holy Ghost is coming. Glory to God. Don't ever give up. Don't ever quit. Don't ever stop expecting. Just keep singing. I've got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible says. Glory to God. You believe what you hear. So watch what you say. Woo. I like this. <laughs> when we come to church and we sing the songs of praise and worship we are sowing faith into our spiritual man many who claim they do not need to go to church to live a Christian life fail to recognize this important function of our gatherings it's in the sanctuary of the saints that we speak and hear those things which are conducive to and nourishing of our faith one of the worst traits we as human beings have is that negative speech, that repeating the negative things we've heard. And we get to the point where we just repeat the same negative things. It's one of the worst traits that a human being has. But I'm going to tell you a little secret. Don't try to stop doing it. Now, everybody looking at me, I, I, boy, I got you all really... 
on the edge of your seat, except Bill. Bill, I'm telling you, he's the most relaxed guy on the planet. I couldn't get him on the edge of his seat if I told him I just heard there was a nuclear bomb about to hit Dallas. I don't know about that. He's just so relaxed. Mm -hmm. Don't try to stop doing it. No. I'll tell you why. You're not going to be able to. When you've been programmed and when something has become a part of you, if you just say to yourself, I'm going to stop speaking negatively. No, you're not. You can try and try and try. I guarantee you, before it's all said and done, you're going to fall right back into the old pattern. Happens every time. Here's how you conquer it. Replace the negative behavior with a positive one. So don't try to stop doing the other one, Martin. Replace it with something else. So instead of being down-mouthed and negative all the time, just get it in your head that when somebody says something to me, I'm going to profess a positive profession. How are you feeling? Well, bless God, I'm making it. By the grace of God, I'm making it. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get done what I'm trying to do. I know the Lord's going to come through. I know the answer's on the way. Hallelujah. God is able. You know those phrases I've just been using? Learn. Just say, okay, I'm not going to try to stop doing one thing. Instead, I'm going to replace it. Because my pastor helped me understand on Sunday, the 3rd of June, 2018, you believe what you say here, so watch what you say. And I've got to be careful about what I allow to come out of my mouth because what comes out of my mouth, I'm going to hear it before anybody else does. I'm going to hear it whether or not anybody else does. The Shunammite woman may well have been trying to keep herself encouraged as she journeyed to the prophet of God. She had obtained a miracle from the Lord through this same prophet in having her son to begin with. Now it would seem that her miracle was about to be torn from her hands. The word of God tells us, Martin, that it's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. But it's also true that we can change the content of our heart by saying what we need to hear and not what our mind or our body or any other source tells us. Oh my goodness. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, if my, if my mouth is going to express what's in my heart, then what's important, Lisa? It's getting my heart right. It's getting sewed into my spirit. It's getting sewed into my heart the things I need to be there so that when circumstances come, automatically, out of the abundance of my heart, the good things are coming. When I first met Tommy, you can't grow up Jehovah's Witness and know how to do this right. Trust me. I said, I don't care what good thing happens in my life. I don't care what blessing comes my way. It can be something as little as a, a, you know, a free cup of coffee, or it can be something as big as God providing a house for us when we were in a real pickle and a real jam. Didn't matter big or small. I always say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hello now, thank you, Jesus. Oh, but I'm telling you, I had to sew that in there so that it became automatic. At first, it took effort. But once you put the effort forth to put it in there, it no longer takes effort. It becomes automatic. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Do you follow what I'm saying? So put forth the effort today, knowing that down the road, it won't be any effort at all. You'll automatically find yourself speaking faith. You'll automatically find yourself speaking a positive profession. You'll automatically find yourself speaking words that reflect your confidence and your trust and your faith in God. Not your fear of your circumstance or your situation. Glory to God in Luke chapter almost done. I know, I know I'm running, I'm not running all that late today, but I know the service is because I took so long at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> you believe what you hear, so watch what you say. 
Martin, Martin, I love Martin. Good man, Martin is. 645 Luke, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. So if you want to know where certain people get all their lies and all their mistruths and all their deception from, it's that's what they treasure in their heart. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. My question to you is, what do you treasure today in your heart? Do you treasure the word of God? You wonder why David said, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Well, you know what sin is? Sin is unbelief. David said, I've hid your word in my heart so that I won't stop believing you. <laughs> I put your word in my heart. I've got all your promises locked up right in here. I've got all your promises Lord, locked right up in here. And when I speak, I speak of your promises. When I speak, I speak of faith. When I speak, I speak of hope. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, life, shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Learn to speak things you need to hear. Because you're feeding your soul when you do so. You're putting things in your heart that later are going to come out automatically. You're not even going to have to work at it. Matthew 14, 28 and 29, we read of Peter on the boat. Jesus is walking on the water toward the boat, Martin. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Isn't it funny Peter didn't say, Lord, if I get out of this boat, I'm going to sink like a log and I'm going to drown and die. No, that's not what he said, is it? Amen. Luke chapter 18, excuse me, Luke chapter 5, verse 12. And it came to pass when he, Jesus, was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus, fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. You hear what this man's saying? You're able. God, you're able. You know, when I pray for people, when I'm praying today, I prayed over the prayer board today before church. I was here about 90 minutes early. I had a wonderful prayer meeting before church. I prayed over the, every need on the prayer board. And as I'm praying for people, I said, Lord, I know you're able. Hallelujah. I know you're able to heal the sick. I know you're able to raise the dead. I know you're able to deliver from demons. I know, God, you're able to deliver from addiction. I know, God, you're able to fill with the Holy Ghost. I know, God, you're able to save. I know, God, you're able to reclaim the backslider. I know, God, you're able to restore those who have lost their faith. Hallelujah. Well, why do you say that? Because... You believe what you hear, so watch what you say. I'm just going to remind myself, God is able. Hallelujah. God is able. Don't you ever for one minute think that no matter what situation you're praying about, no matter what, this woman's son was dead. Folks, how much more desperate can I get than that? You know, we, all, we have people who sit around and they question the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I got news for you, honey. The Lord wasn't the first one to rise from the dead. I guess nobody agrees with me. Have you ever read your Bible? No. While the Lord was walking earth, he raised a woman's, a widow woman's son. While the Lord was walking earth, he called Lazarus out of the tomb. Hello now. The Shumanite woman's son was raised from the dead. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? Oh, i got news for you. There were quite a few people risen from the dead. What, by the time we get to Jesus, believing God could do that shouldn't have been nothing at all. <laughs> already been down that road. Already saw God has the power over life and death. It don't mean nothing to him. No way. Hello now. We already know God is able. Hallelujah. 
If there's any phrase you ought to learn, it's simply this. God is able. Whatever your situation, we got a mess in our country. That's okay. God is able. We got a demon in the White House. That's all right. God is able. Hallelujah. If we're not careful, we're going to lose our democracy. Yep, but God is able. You hear what I'm telling you today? You believe what you say. You, I can't keep saying it wrong. You believe what you hear. So watch what you say. Lastly, today, and I close with this thought. Matthew 9, verses 20 and 21. You probably have to go to work today, don't you? No? Hallelujah. Martin's going to get to eat with us today. Woo Give me a chance to slap him. No. <laughs> <laughs> and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Listen to these next words. Verse 21, Matthew 9. For she said, For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Hallelujah. You believe what you hear. So watch what you say. Amen. Oh, she said to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be whole. Hallelujah. Ooh, if that don't make you want to get Pentecostal real fast and shout a little, I don't know what does. Self, listen to me. All you got to do is touch the hem of his garment. Self, listen to me. All you got to do is reach out and grab hold of that hem, and you shall be whole. God is able. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Isn't that what the word of the Lord says? Oh, folks, you believe what you hear. I got it right this time. So watch what you say. Would you stand with me this afternoon? Amen.